morning dear friends and welcome to today's module in the previous module we had talked about digital communication infrastructure in the context of virtual teams and virtual presentations in this module and also in the coming modules during this week we shall be looking at one of the key components of technical communication that is the writing process we will try to understand the shift from traditional writing to the landscape of digital writing why it matters today and how the integration of technology has changed the whole outlook of writing and communication in our world it has changed from the perspective of the writer as well as from the perspective of the reader we will look into the framework processes and the use of emergent forms of communication technologies as part of digital writing the concept of digital writing addresses the question of how writing and communication work in digital spaces it is the art and practice of preparing documents primarily by computer and often for online delivery unlike traditional writing digital writing requires designing planning and constructing interactive and dynamic texts that often require multiple media elements like text images video and audio across digital spaces let us look at it in somewhat more detail digital writing includes a wide range of forms like technical writing web pages email copywriting blogs social media posts digital correspondence and digital storytelling etc it has been defined by dan lawrence as writing with technology and writing the type of content that appears across digital media we can also look at it as a form of creative writing that uses digital tools and softwares as an integral part of the conception as well as delivery these forms primarily suggest that digital writing is mainly used for web and social media the most effective digital writers understand at least in part how the tools and technologies they are using operate however digital writing cannot be restricted to computers and word processing softwares only it is also about the networked spaces that computers provide to us where we can compose create share and publish to the world and therefore the technical skills related to digital writing are built on the foundation of as we have discussed earlier to a participatory culture so we can say that the participative culture is a key component of the digital writing process and it requires the skills of appropriation transmedia navigation visualization and networking appropriation refers to the ability to meaningfully sample and merge media content like text audio and video transmedia navigation is the ability to follow the stories and information across multimedia modes visualization suggests the ability to interpret and create data representations for the purposes of expressing ideas finding patterns and identifying trends networking of course is the ability to search for synthesize and disseminate information the images given show how particular visual elements can make the writing come alive it is designed and shared among global communities for a variety of purposes digital writing requires appropriating multiple ideas and multiple content simultaneously like text writing it requires crafting effective ideas and leads and adding appropriate details as well as bringing effective transitions with a strong conclusion and therefore effective digital writing encompasses various processes that involve creating editing 
and publishing written content using digital tools. The safest approach in this direction is perhaps to start drafting without the support of the web only in a word document or any other text editor. Let us look at the writing process. The digital writing process incorporates drafting, revising and editing. For drafting we find that there are platforms like Microsoft Word or Google Docs which offer different features like spell check, grammar correction etc. and they also provide us formatting options. The revision stage also involves reviewing the structure from the point of view of grammar and later on also from the perspective of presentation. And tools like Grammarly, Pro Writing 8 and Hemingway Editor can assist us by providing insights into the readability, choice of our words as well as sentence structures. Editing and proofreading stage also involves the use of certain softwares like Adobe Acrobat Pro and Scrivener which might be used for editing digital documents in professional settings. Digital tools can assist with reorganization of paragraphs, with the refinement of our sentences and can assure coherence and clarity in our writing. Also, digital writing is created for a particular audience, a particular purpose and at a particular time via a particular technology or medium. This means that online tools can invite virtual feedback by instant sharing of texts. This adds to the participatory culture of the digital writing processes as the role and visualization of the probable audience has become much more significant in comparison of the previous stages of non-digital writing processes. The digital writing process also incorporates feedback, format options, as well as the publishing opportunities. Tools like cloud storage or other collaborative platforms can aid in easy sharing of works and real-time collaboration. Suggestions and constructive criticism also enhance our writing. The format aspects includes design and formatting features like using headings, bullets, hyperlinks, incorporating images as well as certain multimedia elements so that our writing also becomes more accessible for the target audience. Digital tools also allow easy distribution, sharing and promotion of the written content through digital platforms like personal blogs, websites or social media. It is important to remember that digital tools are only aids they do not substitute for our own critical thinking and it is advisable to make use of the suggestions provided by these tools but ensure that they align with our own intended meaning and style. As writing has changed with computer mediated and networked environments, our conceptions about what it means to be literate has also changed. There are different theories that can inform our thinking of what it means to write with technology and how writing has been changed by technology. Two major theories in this context pertinent to understanding digital writing are Langshear and Noble's New Literacies and Paul Gilster's Digital Literacies. The theory of new literacies was developed by Mission Noble and Colin Langshear in their work. It outlines how newer technologies and social norms are changing what it means to be literate in a society. It suggests two mindsets that accompany old and new ways of envisioning literacy. The first mindset approaches the world as being much the same now as it used to be in the past, only with the difference that the world today has become more technologized. The second mindset 
sees the world as having changed significantly due to the digital technology and also the fact that cyberspace is part of the physical world is recognized in the second theory. The cyberspace is not only part of the physical world but also operates on its values. Nobel and Langshir remind us that writing is no more a closed system but one that involves networks and shared visions of how knowledge is made and distributed across digital spaces. The second theory called the pedagogy of multiliteracies emerged from the work of the New London Group, a group of scholars in the field of literacy studies. The theory of pedagogy of multiliteracies was developed by the New London Group. It suggests that the concept of being multiliterate means knowing visual, oral, spatial, gestural and other literacies that move beyond basic print texts. Writing is about the many ways in which language, culture and technology interact. Paul Gilster had developed the theory of digital literacy in his 1997 work, which suggests that evaluating content and mastering search engines are the building blocks for being digitally literate. We will learn about digital literacy in detail in the coming modules. Nearly all the writing that we do today is informed by digital writing tools, whether we get information from the net or see a commercial that helps us think of a creative idea to reach our audience in a presentation. These tools can incorporate websites, softwares, media sources and any other type of network communication. This is also the reason why digital writers need to have certain key skills to be effective at their work. And now let us have a look at them. The key skills which are required by a digital writer incorporate prototyping, optimization, interactivity and automation. Prototyping helps digital writers in creating mockups or prototypes which can be in the form of sketches or testable demonstrations. Optimization is the process of somehow tuning and tweaking the digital strategies to get the best possible results to ensure that the content is efficient and effective and is being driven by data at proper speed. Interactivity refers to the extent to which a media subject can communicate with the user including our responsivity to our consumers in the form of feedbacks, testimonials and replies. Automation is allowing technology to run on its own. The pictures show creating a prototype of a website using Adobe Photoshop. The website can be optimized if we feel that they are not performing appropriately. Similarly, Chat GPT is an example of an AI driven chatbot which has automated many tasks like answering questions, generation of content, language translation and much more. Digital writing encompasses various forms and styles of writing that are specifically tailored for digital platforms. They include blogs, technical writing, copywriting, emails etc. All of us now are familiar with the terms blogging, copywriting and UX writing. Blogs are typically focused on personal experiences, opinions or specific topics of individual interests. Copywriting involves writing persuasive and compelling content usually for promotional campaigns, ads and other forms of marketing communication. UX writing includes crafting concise and user-friendly text for user interfaces or chatbots. It focuses on clarity, guidance and delivering a positive user experience. The casual and personal manner of blogs are adopted by many companies today to share their user experience. The product description of Swiggy and McDonald's that we saw in these images as part of copywriting show how digital writing can persuade audience 
in a creative and interactive manner. In the context of different types of digital writing, we should also look at social media and website content writing, email writing and technical writing. Social media and website content writing involves crafting concise and engaging content for different posts, captions and hashtags on social media. And at the same time, creating a written content for websites and web pages. Emails are normally used for various purposes, particularly in the context of business communication, customer support, marketing campaigns. They are also used for personal correspondence. However, for informal personal correspondence, we find that the, their popularity has rather diminished. Technical writing suggests the creation of instructional or informational content, for example, the preparation of users' manuals or online tutorials. It explains complex concepts or procedures in a clear and concise manner for an ordinary audience who might not be exposed to the technical side of the using of a machine or any particular equipment. All these forms of digital writing focus on persuasiveness and search engine optimization that optimizes online content to improve its visibility. The digital landscape continually evolves and new forms of digital writing may emerge as technology advances and new platforms are developed. Let us take the example of copywriting to understand how digital writing plays an important part in it for creating compelling content for marketing and advertising purposes. So we look at different examples in this slide. British Airways had used digital writing on a London billboard in its lookup campaign to identify planes overhead. The copy clearly communicates the benefits of their service and also generates interest. The digital ad by the athletic brand Nike is a compelling copy that grabs attention and conveys its value proposition. The tagline shows the brand's stance and support with the NFL quarterback Colin Kaepernick. It struck the chord with the right consumers. Similarly, the application LinkedIn uses metrics in its ad copy which entices viewers to click for guides. Copywriters have strategically placed relevant keywords within the copy with meta tags and hashtags that improve the website's visibility. It increased the market value of these brands. The internet has now become a publishing platform for a variety of genres. This entails having knowledge about how to write for the web. And the web has become a digital space to write that is specifically tailored for online consumption. It focuses on creating content for websites and also involves considering the user experience, readability and navigability of the web page. Let us look at the key aspects of digital writing for the web. As we have remarked earlier, digital writing for the web refers to the practice of creating written content specifically tailored for consumption on digital platforms. It may be in the shape of websites, blogs, social media, online publications, etc. It should have normally descriptive headings, short paragraphs and bullet points to present information in a format which can be scanned easily rather than to be read in a detail word by word. Hyperlinks are incorporated to provide additional resources or direct readers to related information. It is also enhanced with multimedia elements like images, videos and infographics. When we publish content to the web, we have a potentially global audience. However, simply publishing the content on web does not mean that anyone will be able to see it. We need to know the number and type of users who visit the website 
and thereby to optimize the search engines so that this content will reach the targeted audience. In short, we need to know the web traffic and search engine optimization so that digital writers can create content that aligns with the interests of the target audience. Web traffic refers to the number and type of visitors who access a website or its specific pages. Search engine optimization or SEO contributes to generating web traffic by increasing the visibility of the website based on search performance. By incorporating relevant keywords within the content, digital writers can optimize content for search engines and attract web traffic. Effective digital writing practices contribute to driving web traffic while increased web traffic validates the effectiveness of digital writing strategies. SEO will be taken in detail in the coming modules. Websites typically have different types of pages that showcase different forms of digital writing and digital writing for these pages requires considerations such as audience targeting and readability. The content on these pages should be tailored to the needs and preferences of the online audience while maintaining a consistency of tone in voice. So we repeatedly emphasize the role of the audience in communication earlier only in the context of the offline communication but now we find that the participation by the audience has become much more important and effective and immediate in online or digital communication. Effective digital writing plays a crucial role in creating persuasive and compelling content for web page. A landing page is a standalone web page that is specifically designed with a focused objective in mind and to drive traffic away from one place to another. Digital writers use headlines, subheadlines, visuals and compelling call to action and engaging content. Digital writing plays a crucial role in creating an effective privacy policy page for a website also. All relevant topics and user data such as cookies, data retention, data sharing, security measures, users rights and contact information are addressed on them. The home page serves as the gateway to a website and digital writers use unique selling points, brand storytelling and multimedia integration for its creation. These are just a few examples of the different types of pages that can be found on a website. The specific page and the required write-up will vary depending on the purpose, goals and nature of the website. This means that digital media interfaces hail certain people as their ideal users and others as not so ideal. Let us look at this closer through a form of digital writing called UX writing, also known as user experience writing. UX writing refers to the practice of creating clear, concise and also user-centered content that appear throughout the interface of digital products. UX writers focus on microcopy, that is small snippets of text that are used throughout a user interface to provide guidance, instructions and are also used as labels. Macro copy, which is informative messages, invitations or confirmations. Information architecture, that is organization and structure of content within a digital product. Voice and tone, which is personality and style of writing used in the user interface. Onboarding, which introduces users to a new product or service. If we look at the pictures of UX writing on digital products like Spotify, Apple and Slack, the design thinking only caters to a particular style and a particular audience. This target audience is the ideal addressee or what the Russian philosopher Mikhail Bakhtin calls as the super addressee. The following slide explains the concept of super addressee for those who might not be 
familiar with it. The following slide explains the concept of super addressee for those who might not be familiar with it. Such writing shows the strategic projection of certain socio-cultural practices. Let us see what Bakhtin means by the concept of a super addressee. So as Bakhtin has explained, interfaces always entail a super addressee, that is a social identity that users take on by legitimating only certain kinds of participants and interaction. This means that software interfaces shape audience and their participation through the lens of user stylization and the imposed interaction that may result from this. Let us look at this with the example of cookie consent notices which is a common form of UX writing. We can easily say that UX writers do not simply write for a targeted audience but they also craft their audience producing a super addressee or an ideal listener imagined to fully understand the utterance. Cookie consent notices, as we know, are microcopies used by UX writers. They collaborate with designers to create an explicit stylization of their content, and this projects a particular socio cultural style and a predetermined social identity that creates a constrained participation structure. Let us see a video of a TED talk where a UX designer, Joannis Ippin, talks about how UX writing and designing has become the driving force behind successful products. So Ippin talks about how UX writing and designing has become the driving force behind successful products. At the same time, we find that this happens at the expense of happiness, mental health, and purpose. Let us listen to him. Companies like Facebook, Spotify, or Twitch, they know about that. Those companies are dominant in their space because of great UX. They know how to create amazing experiences for their users. And that is a problem. Because, see, all of these products, all of these companies are services. They are targeted towards a mass audience and they monetize through advertisement. The more people use these products, these services, the better. Actually, those services only work when people do use them. How good a product is can be determined through key metrics like usage rate or retention. We call this engagement and we base our design decisions on them. So we design to grab your attention to kidnap it, to lock it in and hold on to it. We design these products to be used. And the real world impact of that is horrifying. Last year, there have been almost 800,000 divorces here in the United States alone. Over a third of them, a British study found, are blaming Facebook for these divorces. So the design decision to give couples a tool that gives them full transparency of interaction and a crazy amount of information about the other person, about the significant other, does result in unhappier relationships. And giving them a product that is designed to be used and attention-grabbing doesn't really help either. So whenever you read a news story about a kid spending too much money in a mobile game, or how we are spending 13% of our productive time in social media, or how great user experience products like Uber or Airbnb are driving the gig economy, all of these are design decisions someone at these companies made. A design decision that truly stands out, in my opinion, is Snapchat streaks. So we know that Snapchat is an important and but yeah, really cool, a social media and direct communication tool. When you are sending a message with a friend, forth and back for a couple of days, you are on a streak. You get rewarded by this little fire icon right next to your name, and you have to keep the streak going. The longer, the better. And users of Snapchat do take this very seriously. So what started as a fun little feature to 
showcase and emphasize relationships now resulted in something that drives anxiety, that results in labor, and that creates fear of missing out. He talks about how companies like Facebook, Spotify, and Snapchat create amazing user experience for their users through writing and design. It shows how these companies as services targeted towards a particular audience create horrible impacts in the name of engagement and design decisions. Creating and presenting written content on websites requires web building tools and these tools comprise various modes of digital writing like design softwares, visual editors, formatting and content management. These web building tools are necessary to create an interactive piece of digital writing. Website builders are user friendly platforms that provide intuitive drag and drop interfaces, pre-designed templates and customization options. CMS or content management system allow digital writers to create, edit and publish their content on websites. Design softwares and visual editors like Adobe Photoshop, Sketch or Figma play a role in the visual presentation of written content. Version control systems are tools that ensure that written content is tracked, revised and reviewed in a controlled manner. These tools provide platforms, interfaces and collaboration mechanisms that allow digital writers to present their content effectively on the web. Digital writing does not solely rely on writing. It is a crossover between writing, language, technology and also the visual. Changing cultural trends have led to the rise of many narrowly defined sub-genres or micro-genres within digital writing. Micro-genres like fan fictions and memes have become cultural icons in digital platforms. They employ many non-linear storytelling techniques to engage readers in innovative ways. Micro-genres can arise from the intersection of specific themes, styles or formats with the digital medium. Memes play a significant role in digital writing through humorous or satirical images, videos or text snapshots. Digital writing incorporates flash fiction that are extremely short stories often limited to a few hundred words or even a single tweet. Let us take an example of the popular brand Nike's ad as a micro genre of digital writing within the broader genre of advertising. The video shows Nike's ad, for once don't do it, in support of racial justice. The video features a black background with white text with a message that asks people not to pretend there is not a problem in America and not to turn their backs on racism. The ad closes with, let's all be part of the change. So we can see that this ad subverts the brand's classic slogan, just do it, by calling on people to for once, don't do it. The writing reflected the brand's core values, identity, and focus on consumer demands. So it becomes clear now that digital writing exists in a multi-layered environment which is shaped by ethical, legal and policy concerns. 
As writers use content found on the net, they must consider whether their use of material constitutes fair use or violates copyright or any other sentiment. All these elements shape the digital ecology. So, what do we mean by fair use and creative commons? Copyright is a legal framework that grants creators exclusive rights over their original works. Fair use can be applicable in the digital writing context when you want to quote, excerpt or reference someone else's work. It also allows for limited use of copyrighted material without explicit permission. Creative Commons is an organization that provides a set of licenses that allow creators to offer permissions beyond the scope of traditional copyright. Works under public domain are not protected by copyright or whose copyright has expired. Copyright gives creators a control over how their works are reproduced, distributed, performed or displayed. Digital writers should be aware of copyright protections and consider fair use when incorporating the work by other people and can leverage Creative Commons license to share their own work under specific terms and conditions. There are other ethical dimensions to digital writing and composing. Let us look at some of them. These ethical considerations incorporate authorship and ownership, privacy and data protection, plagiarism and attribution, and privacy and data protection. Respecting intellectual property rights and obtaining licenses for copyrighted material deals with authorship and ownership issues. And ethical digital writing also respects the privacy of the user and ensures the protection of the user's data. Plagiarism and attribution suggests that proper attribution through citations is essential when incorporating or building further upon the work of other people is concerned. Digital writers have an ethical obligation to ensure the accuracy and truthfulness of their content. We shall discuss intellectual property rights, participation and digital citizenship in the coming modules. Nevertheless, one of the main aims of digital writing is to reach a vast and global audience. Digital publishing makes it easier for the work to be discovered and accessed by a large group of people. When we look at the issue of publishing digital writers, what immediately comes to our mind are social media platforms like Twitter and LinkedIn which offer opportunity to share and publish our digital writing with a broad audience. Digital portfolios, that is a curated collection of our best works, is an excellent way to showcase and publish our own digital writing. It can be in the shape of a website, a blog, or a slideshow and such other means. Collaborative word processors like Google Docs or Dropbox give easy access to multiple writers to insert comments, highlight text, and also suggest revisions. Longer pieces of work and ebooks can also be published and distributed to digital marketplaces and self publishing platforms like Smashwords and Lulu. With a sea of content available online, writers must also know how to actively promote their work and employ effective strategies to interact with readers and also utilize social media to attract and retain an audience. Engaging and building a loyal audience in the digital space is challenging as online audience tend to have a short attention span due to the constant flux of information. However, digital writing is expanding as it is being shaped by technological advancements, evolving reader preferences, and the changing landscape of digital media. Digital writing will likely continue to integrate with social media platforms and online communities. We can say that digital technologies should be approached critically, perhaps also philosophically and 
rather rhetorically. Digital writing has started incorporating interactive elements and immersive experiences to engage readers and also to continually create better participatory reading experiences. With the increasing use of data analytics and AI, digital writing may become more personalized and also more adaptive. Digital platforms can amplify marginalized or underrepresented voices, allowing for greater diversity and inclusivity in storytelling. The future of digital writing may witness a broader range of perspectives, stories and voices gaining visibility and recognition. In the next module, we will focus on interdisciplinary approaches in the field of digital writing, particularly digital literature and also how to access the online digital content. We shall look at it through an analysis of various literary texts and select critical perspectives. Thank you.